Okay, after that long-winded sculpture lecture, you get a bit of a break today. Most of today's lecture will come from an excellent video entitled Egypt, Engineering and Empire. If you feel like watching the entire video, and I admit it's long, here is a link. I should note that the URLs may not work in the future. The original YouTube video that I used last year disappeared and was replaced by this one. If the video URLs need updating, you'll find the current ones on our Moodle site. What made this building unique was not the pyramid shape, think of ziggurats, but its construction out of stone over deep underground chambers. Note also that each corner was lined up with one of the cardinal compass points, north, south, east, west. This demonstrated advanced mathematics and a grasp of astronomy. Uh, the video clip describes the huge innovation of the step pyramid, a popular AP exam topic, by the way. Uh, this shows the hypostyle hall of the stepped pyramid. Note the two parts of a column, the shaft and the capital, and that these are engaged columns. Joser, excuse me, is succeeded by his son, Snefru, who builds the first smooth-sided pyramid after two failures. Uh, the story of the failures is interesting, but you're not sure going to see it. Uh, you should, again, feel free to check out the full video. Snefru finally succeeds with the Red Pyramid, and his son, Khufu, constructs the first of the Great Pyramids. And the story continues with this video clip. These are the only wonders of the ancient world still standing. Note that the pyramids were originally covered with smooth limestone casing. It's like seeing a modern day house with the stucco or brick facing removed. The original pyramids would have shimmered in the sunlight. Note also that the temple complexes were built to the east of the pyramids facing the sun. Uh, during this period, the cult of the sun god Ray achieved much greater prominence. The pyramids at Giza, complete with Sphinx, showed up on last year's AP test. The 2014 essay question is your second extra credit option, and it's posted for you on Moodle. Uh, once again, we pass over the Middle Kingdom. Oh, well. The video goes on to give what I thought was a fascinating account of military architecture under Sesostris, the great warrior pharaoh of the Middle Kingdom. If you think castles are cool, here's the link again. Feel free to check it out. The Middle Kingdom conquered much of what is now Sudan, but fell to the Hyksos invaders from Western Asia. We're going to take up our story again with the new kingdom and a fascinating female pharaoh, Hatshepsut. The slide mentions a couple of features you should pay attention to, but let me further note that this would be an excellent work to choose to discuss how art reinforces power and authority. Hatshepsut's authority was very definitely questioned, and this temple was her vigorous, truly forceful response. Before we look at more images from this mortuary temple, let me briefly show some Egyptian columns. You do not need to memorize all these terms, but it would not hurt to remember that Egyptian columns use plant images. You may remember from the Palette of Narmer that the papyrus plant represents Lower Egypt and the lotus flower represents Upper Egypt. This symbolism persisted two millennia after the two kingdoms united. On top you see a lotus flower column and a lotus bud capital. On bottom you see a papyrus cluster bud column and a papyrus flower column with matching capitals. Note that the papyrus column is fluted or carved with grooves. Fluting refers to those shallow grooves running vertically along the column shaft. Uh, you're more likely to be asked to distinguish Egyptian and Greek columns, but that will need to wait for the next unit. For now, here are some important terms. Uh, the most important by far are base, shaft, and capital, but again, as I just noted, uh, you should note the term uh, fluted. So here you see the colonna colonnades at Queen Hatshepsut's mortuary temple. Chamfered pillars are not rounded, but instead have squared or beveled sides. Oops, move that a little fast. Note the two long causeways leading up to the chamfered pillars and beyond them to the hypostyle hall. Again, those are that rows of pillars covered by a roof. By the way, when there are columns but no roof, what you have is a peristyle hall. Again, we're going to hit all of these terms again when we get to Greece. But for some reason, the hypostyle halls, the ones where you have what looks like a forest of columns, show up frequently on the AP exam. 
Well, we're going to skip over Akhenaten. He and his so-called Amarna period will get their own lecture. Let's fast forward in our quick review of New Kingdom architecture to Seti's tomb in the Valley of the Kings. The slide indicates the most important features you should note from the video. Here again, you see a hypostyle hall along with the high clerestory windows uh, that let in light. Hypostyle halls show up, as I said, on the AP test all the time, and so do clerestory sorry, windows. We're going to encounter hypostyle halls again in Islamic mosques and clerestory windows in Roman basilicas and Christian cathedrals. So there you see those terms. Seti is succeeded by his son, Ramses II, perhaps Egypt's most famous pharaoh. Uh, we're going to conclude this race through Egyptian architecture with a look at his extraordinary mortuary temple at Abu Simbel. A note that this temple was moved to higher ground when the Aswan Dam was built and flooded the land where it stood. I'm leaving out that part of the video, but you should feel free to watch it. It was really a fascinating international cooperative effort. Again, the slide points to features you should notice. Let me just close by mentioning that there is a link on Moodle to a virtual tour of Queen Nefertari's tomb. Uh, we didn't assign it. I highly recommend it. It's a really wonderful look at Egyptian tomb painting.